what is going on guys welcome back to the channel my name is philip with geared towards automotive and today we are reviewing and looking at the 2019 kia sportage sx turbo this is more of the top of the line version this vehicle has a 2.0 liter engine and it uh, has 240 horsepower you have the econ and the sport mode and man i gotta turn my heated seats off it's cold out, but it's not that cold out. But you have the ventilated seats, heated seats, and a heated steering wheel as well. The steering wheel has more of a flat bottom to it, along with the uh, stippled leather on the sides where your hands would hold it at kind of 10 and two. And up top and bottom, you have the flat leather. So super sporty feel. I honestly feel like I'm in a an Audi or a BMW. It really just to me resonates with like Audi. Um, and I know a long, long time ago, uh, Kia had somebody who with Audi inspired um, design history working for them but that was back in like i think 2010 so now with the fourth generation uh these cars have come a long way and the sportage just blows me away I, it, it's been a while since i've been in a newer one or the newest generation and i can tell you that uh, i feel like i'm almost in like a fighter pilot uh, cockpit you have all of these toggles and switches down here and then all of your controls right here but the flat bottom steering wheel it just again it reminds me of like an s series audi and you have your eight inch touch screen ahead of you there so uh, we're going to take it for a little spin and you have the econ mode sport mode and uh, normal driving mode with the paddle shifters so we're going to have a little bit of fun and take the vehicle out on the road this 2019 kia sportage was provided to me by carriage kia of woodstock they have a massive selection of vehicles new and pre-owned and uh, their showroom is beautiful it was it's brand new it was just built a few years ago so they're located in woodstock georgia and thank you to you guys for letting me borrow this vehicle to review but this is the 2019 kia sportage sx turbo fully loaded this is black cherry on the outside with the beige sx turbo package for the leather on the inside you have satellite radio you have the uh, apple carplay android auto one of the coolest features about the 2019 kia sportage is that in the front you have your more modern sporty looking lighting of course and your new uh, grill right here but down below you're going to have your front parking sensors your chrome diffuser right down there but if you look closely you'll have almost this see-through glass piece right here and that is what picks up the road and the vehicles in front of you and all of the stuff that the vehicle needs to see to help you stay on the road so it's those uh, driving aid systems that Kia has in the vehicle all of those features are controlled right behind that piece right there coming along the side of the vehicle you'll notice the massive aggressive looking 19 inch wheels and then the body lines on this vehicle are just really sporty and sharp notice how these tires aren't that big but for some reason the way the body lines are on this car that made it look almost like the back end of a Porsche Cayenne or something like that. I mean, you have your dual exhaust right back here with your LED lighting. And then again, look at the back tires, how sporty and awesome that looks. As you walk up to the front of the vehicle, you'll notice you have the lock and unlock controls right there. It is keyless entry. Just grab this, open it up and you'll notice the beautiful inside of the new 2019 Kia Sportage. Over on the left, you have your power folding mirrors, all your locks and window controls there. You have the piano black accent right here along this beige interior. This is the beige leather right here. You have the perforated seats. They are heated and ventilated along with the yellow orangish piping right here, black trim and yellow contrast stitching there. Leather everywhere you touch. Pretty luxury for this vehicle. And then over in the middle, you're going to have your drive modes, your parking sensors, where you can turn those on and off, electronic parking brake, and then buttons galore over there. But there's not too many buttons. They're all in the right spot. And it's kind of like you're in a cockpit of a fighter jet. You have all these little toggles to turn on all of your controls or turn them off. And you have a nice sporty flat bottom steering wheel here, which I think might be my favorite part of the car. You have the stippled design right here with the flat leather design right here. And it's just super sporty with the paddle shifters. So again, Smaller SUV, but with the 2.0 turbo, you have a sporty, fun feel at the same time. Over on the left side of the steering wheel, you'll notice you have your traction control buttons, power lift gate, your lane keep assist, and your blind spot indicators on and off. You can kind of adjust those settings right there and your brightness settings. Some of those are there, and then the other stuff is all over here in your steering wheel or in the center console over there. And when you're messing around with these buttons on the steering wheel, you'll notice you have this little page button here. If you look up past the steering wheel, and you cycle through all of these features, you're gonna have your audio controls, your tire pressure monitor, 
your user settings, your gas mileage and range, and then you have your compass. And I would only assume that when you have your directions on with your map, you're going to see that right there. Lane departure system is going to come up right there, and then you can control your uh, lane departure system on and off. You can toggle that from the buttons over on the left side of the steering wheel, along with your blind spot detection system. And then your audio controls back to your tire pressure settings and vehicle settings here. As you look down below, you'll notice you have your sport pedals included in this model. And over here to the left, you have your Harman Kardon audio, which is going to pump a high quality audio throughout the vehicle. Straight across, no visibility is is sacrificed or blocked up here by a big dashboard or anything like that. So let's talk about this section right here. So all of these buttons at first may seem overwhelming and confusing to some, however, I'm here to tell you that it's actually not that bad. So if you just kind of follow along the line here, number one, I think it's fun and more modern looking. It's like the cockpit of a fighter jet and you have all these toggles you can flip on and off. But all of this up here is just your audio controls, power on and off here, volume, and then you can switch radio stations or tracks here. Dual climate control right below that, along with your fan up and down, where you want it blowing. Climate will bring that up on the screen up there. And then you have your front rear defrost, etc. all that stuff. Directly below that, you're gonna have your heated steering wheel, ventilated seats, and heated seats. So yes, there are a lot of buttons there. However, it's pretty self-explanatory and easy to work. Directly below there, you're gonna have your 12 volt outlet, 180 watt, you have two of those, auxiliary and USB. You would plug right into USB for the Apple CarPlay or the Android Auto, which is standard on the vehicle as well. And then all the way down directly past that, you're gonna have these buttons for drive mode, parking sensors on and off, automatic brake hold, electronic parking brake, and downhill assist. So the new eight inch touchscreen features your audio and information over on the right side. And then you're gonna have your navigation, which is satellite based on the left side. You have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard on this model, along with satellite radio as well. Um, if I hit the home screen, that's what this looks like. If I go over to all menus, it's gonna give me my options of phone, the Kia Uvo e-services, uh, the data services, voice command, quick guide. And if I swipe over, I have the navigation menu and I can jump over to climate. And you'll notice you can hit climate there or down here on your little toggle. But if I hit it up here, just to show you how the touch screen works, it says off. And then you control all your dual climate features here, here. You have three different levels of ventilated seats here and heated seats here, along with the heated steering wheel on this model. So on a day like today, it's kind of freezing. You get your hands and uh, seat nice and toasty. As we switch into reverse, you'll notice your backup camera comes up automatically on that screen and you have the dynamic guideline to show you where you'll end up. As you get close to an object, you will notice that your backup sensors will of course go off if you have those on based on the keypad over on the left side. You can turn those on and off. You also have sensors up on the front of the vehicle. So if you're parking close to somebody or about to hit a building or a pole, you're going to have that go off as well. When you flip it into reverse, you'll notice in the center here you have your parking sensors that pop up there. So those are gonna kinda of give you a visual of where you're gonna, you know, which parking sensors you're gonna bump into as they go off. In the rear, you'll notice you have plenty of space. You have the ventilation, 12 volt outlet and USB port for your passengers in the back. And you have the plastic seat back so nobody scuffs up your leather. Then you have the nets for storage as well. These seats do go flat. All you have to do is pull this little tab right here and those drop down flat. You have the seat anchors and the tethers as well, and those click into position, both of them do, so you have full utilization of the storage in the back of the vehicle. And again, the Kia Sportage, even though it is smaller than the Sorento and a smaller uh, SUV class, once you're in it, you really have no idea that you're in a smaller SUV. You feel like you're in a nice, comfy, uh, luxury, top quality vehicle. So as I'm passing this truck up here, you instantly notice, I don't even know what mode I'm in. I'm not even in sport mode. And you instantly notice, wow, in sport mode, you really feel the difference between the 2.0 liter uh, turbo being in sport mode and not. I mean, this thing just kind of instantly flies. And that was my blind spot indicator yelling at me because that guy was a little bit too close to me. However, uh, the vehicle is super comfortable. Um, I just feel like I'm in a higher end vehicle. It holds the road really well. Steering is stiff, but not too stiff, if that makes sense. So uh, it's not like BMW stiff, 
uh, which I, honestly I'm not a huge fan of. I like it to be a little bit cushy, kind of like this is, but the steering feels solid. I mean, the vehicle holds the road well and you don't have a lot of turbo lag. You think you would in these modern four cylinder turbos, but as soon as you punch it, sport mode or not, you're gonna feel that instant power and be able to get around the people in front of you or, or uh, get up to speed pretty quickly. So this 2.0 liter engine with the turbo is the same engine you're gonna find in the Kia Stinger. So if you're wondering, is this vehicle gonna have enough power and you haven't driven it yet, just keep in mind, this is the same engine that they're using in their basically their muscle car, their new Kia Stinger. So um, I can tell you, yes, after driving this vehicle, it has plenty of power, and I can't imagine this vehicle weighs all that much more in the grand scheme of things than the uh, Stinger does. It's a smaller sized SUV. It's basically the same size as the vehicle, it's just more of an upright layout with more cargo space, uh, but it has plenty of power to get the job done. A Little bit of an acceleration test right here. I'm just gonna kind of floor it up this hill and oh my gosh. Yeah, it throws you back in your seat. It almost breaks loose, and that was accelerating up a hill, and that was like zero to basically 40, 45 in a matter of a few seconds. So just me in the car, not loaded down, but man, this car has plenty of power to do whatever you want it to do, trust me. Gas mileage on this vehicle is 21 city, 26 highway, and with an average of 23. So. That, in my opinion, is pretty good looking at all the other vehicles out there right now. Um, I'd be pretty comfortable getting in the mid-20s for a vehicle that has more than enough power to get the job done, along with all of the cargo capabilities that this vehicle has as well. I mean, you could throw a roof rack out on this thing and go camping or go skiing, and then at the other end of the spectrum, you can take this thing on the highway and cruise over to work and get there in no time because you're packing a 2.0 liter turbocharged engine with 240 horsepower. So let's talk about the engine and transmission. It has 240 horsepower. It's a 2.0 liter turbo. So even though it is a four cylinder, it has plenty of power to get you to where you need to go. Uh, it's not underpowered. Um, I don't know if it's possible for it to be overpowered, but uh, you don't notice the fact that it is a a four cylinder it doesn't lag or anything like that the uh, turbo lag is next to not even there it's it's you can't notice it at all uh, and with the sport mode on you're not going to notice a difference in the power whatsoever that's going to do it for this week's video again this is the 2019 kia sportage sx turbo i'm philip with geared towards automotive and if this is your first time tuning into the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can see new videos every week we do vehicle reviews how-to videos and automotive technology videos thanks again hit that like button if you enjoyed it leave a comment down below about what vehicle you'd like to see next week or in future videos and we will catch you on the next video